computation reaction in the solid state in actually in this lesson we are studying regarding metals so first we studied how the metal react with others uh, metal react with acid metal react with uh, water metal react with steam metal react with oxygen and which gas they will produce and what will be the products that we studied uh, when metal react with acid it will produce the metal salt and the hydrogen when it is react with oxygen it will produce the metal oxide when metal react with water it will produce the metal hydroxide and hydrogen and when it is react with steam it will produce metal oxide and the hydrogen that we studied so after that uh, we studied the decomposition of metal how they decompose and uh, reactive metal moderately reactive metal and uh, unreactive met metals how they are uh, decomposing so uh, three cases we discuss first case we studied nitrates in the case of a nitrate the reactive metals they will produce produce their nitrite and oxygen and the moderately reactive metals they will produce their oxide nitrogen oxide and oxygen and in the case of a unreactive metals they will produce their metal then nitrogen oxide then oxygen that is the case of the nitrate decomposition then in the case of a decomposition of the carbonates a reactive metal and a non reactive metal they won't decompose only we want to discuss the moderately reactive metals they will produce their oxide and carbon dioxide everybody uh, calcium zinc copper everybody they will produce their oxide and carbon dioxide and next the third case we studied about hydroxides hydroxides are also the same condition uh, the reactive metal and the non reactive metal they won't participate they won't decompose only the moderately reactive metals they will produce their oxide and water so that we studied the last class up to that we studied after that using the reactivity series you know we have a reactivity series we arranged the metals the elements according to their reactivity series first came uh, potassium is the most reactive then sodium then that is the what say more reactive metals potassium and sodium even they will react at the air and the water that's why we are keeping under the oil under the oil we are keeping potassium and sodium then after that the moderately reactive the it will include calcium magnesium aluminium zinc lead copper moderately a medium and after that less reactive or non reactive uh, it will include silver platinum gold so the uh, non reactive metals we arranged there is a series it is called the reactivity series so using the reactivity series now using the reactivity series uh, how they depend the chemical reaction that we want to study the case first case we are going to study computation reactions in the solid state in the case of a solid you know the word meaning computation you know uh, quiz computation uh, and a football competition you know like that competition and after the competition one will win the other will lose so that's the same meaning competition so your computation reactions in the solid state there is a competition uh, they are competing uh, who will get oxygen or, or, or who will react more or who will react first like that there is a competition the, the name itself competition reactions in the solid state first we are going to discuss so listen a more reactive metal has a greater tendency to form a metal ion by losing electrons than a less reactive metal mean more there are two two metals for example then out of them which is the more reactive metal more reactive metal we will we'll get from the reactivity series from the reactivity series you will get uh, if the potassium or sodium potassium 
for sodium, uh, potassium is the more reactive than sodium. You know that. So uh, there are two metal. So which is the more reactive metal? Has a greater tendency what to form a metal ion by losing electrons than a less reactive metal. You know uh, we studied the electronic structure. Uh, the first shell, second shell, last shell like that. So if uh, the last shell may be one electron or two electron, that element what will do you know at the time of chemical reaction, they will give that elect one electron to other one. Uh, for example, sodium chloride forming, sodium and chlorine, one of them having outermost shell one electron or two electron. So that one electron, it will give to the other one. So when one electron giving, they will get a positive charge because you know the charge of electron negative. So one negative moving means they will get a positive charge. So that they are saying. So in the case of a uh, reaction between two metals, which is the more reactive metal has greater tendency. Great, they will do what? To form a metal ion by losing electrons than a less reactive Therefore, if a more metal react, more reactive metal is heated with the oxide of a less reactive metal, then it will remove the oxygen from it. So uh, we can say we can study by the use of an example, then you will get a more idea. We can see from the reactivity series that iron is less reactive than aluminium. Here we are uh, checking, we are studying by using two one pair, two metal. One is iron and aluminium. So you can check the reactivity series, which is more reactive. Aluminium or iron. Aluminium is more reactive, then only iron is coming. Aluminium, zinc, then only iron is coming. So aluminium is more reactive. Okay. We are taking two metals, aluminium and iron. Then uh, less reactive than aluminium. Okay. If iron trioxide, this is a, uh, iron trioxide is mixed with the aluminium and the mixture is heated. Uh, iron trioxide and aluminium, uh, which is the least reactive that oxide we want to take. Here aluminium is more reactive, so iron is less reactive. So iron oxide, iron trioxide and aluminium we want to mix together, both of them. And now we have a mixture, a mixture of iron trioxide and aluminium. That mixture is heated using a magnesium fuse. Uh, this arrangement, this arrangement, this is a magnesium fuse. So in the laboratory, what we'll do? We have to make a mixture by using iron trioxide and aluminium. You know, we have, a, we can take any two. Here we, we are doing experiment by using aluminium and iron. So when we are uh, looking the reactivity series, we can see aluminium is more reactive. So which is the less reactive that we want to take? So here iron is less reactive. So iron trioxide and aluminium we mix it together. Now that mixer we want to heat using a magnesium fuse. This apart is okay. A very violent reaction occurs. You know there will be a very violent reaction occurs as the computation. Yeah, this is the uh, uh, reaction name, computation reaction. There is a computation there. Iron trioxide and aluminium, there is a computation between the aluminium and the iron for the oxygen takes place. They are fighting, they are computating for oxygen. The iron trioxide having uh, what oxygen, FeO3, iron trioxide, FeO3. That oxygen, for getting that oxygen, they are commutating to aluminium and iron. This type of reaction is called a commutative commutation reactions. Commutations uh, reaction. Here, aluminium and iron they are commutating, they are fighting for oxygen. Then, what will happen? The aluminium, being more reactive metal, takes the oxygen from the less reactive iron. So, aluminium will get the oxygen in this computation. Aluminium being the more reactive metal takes the oxygen from the less reactive iron. 
so uh, what we can understand if a, a strong uh, reactivity reactive metal and a non -re less reactive metal they are fighting they are competing for the oxygen which is the more reactive they will get the oxygen this is a very exothermic reaction yesterday i think i explained that exothermic means uh, the type of a chemical reaction when heat is producing heat that is called a exothermic reaction so when iron and aluminium sorry iron trioxide and aluminium mixture we are heating it will produce a number of a large amount of heat and, and, and it is called a, an exothermic reaction it is a very exothermic reaction means it will produce more heat when the reaction is over when the reaction is over a solid lump lump means what uh, uh, enormous large large amount uh, a solid lump of iron is left along with a lot of white aluminium oxide powder so that is the chemical reaction we can check the equation uh, what is our reactants iron trioxide fe2o3 trioxide o3 plus aluminium aluminium air then we uh, heated them uh, what we got the product aluminium oxide al2o3 plus iron fe so what happened here from this iron oxide here oxygen is there this oxygen taken by aluminium because aluminium is more reactive aluminium is more reactive so that why it is uh, it took the oxygen from the iron trioxide so this is the what's a commutation reaction here commutation happening both of them commutating for getting the oxygen but those who are having the more reactivity they will take the they will get the oxygen in this commutation they will win they will win which is uh, which having more reactivity they will win if it is happening in the case of a copper and copper and uh, uh, sorry iron and copper you know that iron will win because iron is more reactive than copper so like that uh, in the pair who's having more reactivity they will win and that's a commutation reaction and here also uh, uh, other two reactions also happening one is displacement reaction uh, the lesson man we studied that this oxygen displacing to aluminium because aluminium is more reactive and uh, no iron is free displacement reaction one case we studied that chlorine bromine iodine halogen case chlorine will uh, displace others because chlorine more reactive than bromine and iodine that we discussed so the one, one is uh, displacement reaction happen here and another one uh, redox reaction redox reaction actually lesson 2 now grade 9 students are studying uh, our book lesson 2 redox reaction today uh, I, will, I, will, I will teach you don't worry redox reaction means it having there are two reactions one is oxidation and second one reduction oxidation and reduction if both of them having in a chemical reaction that is called redox reaction then what is oxidation what is reduction oxidation means here you look now aluminium aluminium only here but in the product aluminium got oxygen so in a chemical reaction those who getting or anybody getting oxygen that is called oxidation so your oxidation happened because aluminium uh, at, at the reactants aluminium there is no oxygen but at the product aluminium got oxygen so that is an oxidation at the same time uh, here iron trioxide having oxygen in the reactants but in the product there is no oxygen in the iron so it lost the oxygen aluminium got oxygen but iron iron trioxide lost the oxygen it is called a reduction reduction or reducing reaction so in a chemical reaction anybody getting oxygen that is called oxidation they oxidized now aluminium oxidized now oxidation happened but iron lost the oxygen that is called reduction this is a reduce reaction reduce reaction so that also happened here okay 
So in this reaction, both of them happening. Aluminium oxidized and iron reduced. So both happen, both reaction. Such type of reaction is called a redox reaction. Redox. So in this case, your computational rea computation reaction is the displacement reaction is the and redox reaction is the. So what is our point? From the reactivity series, who having the more reactivity, they will win the computation. So this is a redox reaction. Yeah, already we discussed that. Uh, lesson two, okay, chapter five. This discussing there also. So this particular the, this particular reaction is known as the thermite reaction. It's called a thermite reaction. This only which is aluminium and iron. It's called a, uh, in this particular reaction. There is another name. It's called a thermite reaction. Okay. Since large amount of heat are given out, we said that it's a ex very exothermic reaction. Means it will give out large amount of heat. And the iron is formed in a molten stage. Molt melted stage. This reaction is used to weld together damaged railway lanes. So in the case of a railway track, railway lanes, anywhere damaged track, anything. We can weld by using this uh, thermic reaction because it will produce more heat. So it can melt iron. It can melt iron. It is also used in incendiary bombs. Some bombs also it is using this thermic reaction. Here they are given a picture of that, the thermic reaction in a laboratory. The same reaction is used to weld damaged railway lines. We can melt that iron using we can do that so uh, some metals such as transition metals chromium and titanium you know transition metals where is their place in the periodic table between group 2 and group 3 uh, their uh, characteristics we discussed what is their what is their characteristics so chromium and titanium are prepared from their oxides using this type of computational reaction. You know, this computational reaction, one of the method we can make the metal. You know, we can make iron. How? Iron trioxide, mixer with aluminium, then heat that. We will get iron. We can make iron by this process. Like that, like that, uh, we can make chromium and titanium uh, from their oxides. If you have chromium oxide or titanium oxide, uh, we can uh, heat, we will get chromium and titanium. So that they are saying, some transition metals we are making from their oxides using the, this type of commutation reaction. And also carbon, carbon is not a metal, carbon is a non-metal, uh, just below aluminium. It is able to reduce metal oxides below in the series. So for uh, from the metal oxides for making metal we are using carbon so this is the case of commutation reaction the case of a solid the case of a solid here you want to understand a pair we will take which is the more reactive that will win that will get the oxygen then secondly we want to study commutation reaction in aqua solution first we will discuss in the solid state secondly we want to understand the case of a aqueous solution. Okay, in another reaction, metals compete with each other for other anions. This type of reaction is known as a displacement reaction. That we discuss a displacement reaction here. Aluminum oxygen displaced from here and it placed here in the product. Okay. As in the previous type of commutative reaction, the reactivity series can be used to predict which of the metals will win. Yeah, in this reaction, we are using the reactivity series. Who's having more reactivity, they will win the solid state. In a displacement reaction, a more reactive metal will displace. A more reactive metal will displace a less reactive metal from a solution of its salt. From a solution of 
its salt. So see here. Here. Here what? Zinc plus copper nitrate. Zinc plus copper nitrate. So copper nitrate is a solution. It's a solution, copper nitrate. You can see there written here aqueous. It is a solution. Zinc is a solid piece. Solid, yeah, okay, solid piece, zinc, and copper nitrate is a solution. Then, you know, you can check the reactivity series, zinc and copper, who more reactive? Zinc is more reactive. Zinc, then iron, then lead, then only copper is coming. So, zinc is more reactive. You know, what zinc will do? Zinc will kick the nitrates. Zinc will kick the nitrate from the solution. This is a copper nit nitrate solution. When they will react, zinc is more reactive than copper, it will kick the nitrate from here and the nitrate will sit with the zinc. So that, that's we are seeing here, what uh, in a displacement reaction, a more reactive metal, so more reactive metal will displace, will displace a less reactive metal from a solution of its salt. So what will happen? Zinc will displace copper because it is less reactive. Then zinc will sit here. Now that is the meaning. Okay. Listen once again. In a displacement reaction, a more reactive metal, more reactive metal here zinc, more reactive metal will displace, will displace a less reactive metal from a solution of its salt. This is a solution of less reactive metal salt, means copper nitrate, copper react with nitric acid, that's why copper nitrate form. This is, a, this is a salt solution, metal salt solution. From this, uh, which is the more reactive metal, it displays the metal and it will sit here. Now see, see uh, instead of copper, that zinc came here. That's why zinc nitrate. So this is happening in the case of an aqueous solution. Zinc is above copper in the reactivity series. So what happens when a piece of zinc metal is left to stand in a solution of copper di, copper di nitrate, copper di nitrate. The copper di nitrate slowly loses its blue color. Copper di nitrate slowly loses its blue color. You know copper having blue color. The copper di nitrate slowly loses blue color as the zinc continues to displace the copper from the solution. Yeah, in this displacement reaction we studied zinc will displace copper from the solution. You know, co copper di nitrate solution, this, this blue color solution, this is aqueous. Copper di nitrate solution, this blue color. Into that copper di nitrate solution, we put one zinc rod, one zinc piece. So automatically, what will happen? Zinc will displace copper from the solution. Copper nitrate solution, zinc will displace copper and zinc will come here. So that's why what will happen? The blue color will uh, disappear gradually. Then, uh, so the, the blue color as the zinc continues to displace the copper from the solution and eventually, eventually means at last, finally, what will happen? Becomes colorless zinc nitrate. Becomes colorless zinc nitrate. Means what? There is no copper. Copper displaced it from the, from the solution. And zinc came there. Now zinc nitrate solution. Zinc nitrate solution. So that zinc nitrate solution is a colorless solution we will get. So that is the case of the aqueous solution. So in the, in the case of a solid, in the case of aqueous, there is no matter uh, what will happen now. Uh, they will, the more reactive metal will displace others, not only. Okay. Then, 
the okay this is also a redox reaction here also a redox reaction involving the transfer of two electrons from the zinc metal to the copper ions the zinc is oxidized to zinc ions in aqueous solution it is a possible to confirm the reactivity series for metals using commutation reaction of the type discussed in this section so this is the commutation pure reaction in the case of a solid and a aqueous that is commutation reaction the thing if two metals are commutating those who are no reactivity they will be they will get oxygen and the redox reaction is happening is there and displacement reaction is happening there at the moment and this question answer yesterday i have given you okay i have to a copy that and study that so next topic identifying metal ions so how can we identify which metal ions are the that we want to study now when alkali dissolves in water alkali you know alkali means uh, you know we grade six we studied acids and alkali uh, base salt everything so alkali means uh, example sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide magnesium hydroxide like that so they are called alkalis so when alkali dissolves in water it produces hydroxide ions this known as that most metal hydroxide are insoluble most metal hydroxides are insoluble uh, pota so potassium hydroxide sodium hydroxide or metal uh, like metal hydroxides are insoluble copper hydroxide iron hydroxide so if hydroxide ions from a solution of an alkali are added to a solution of a metal salt an insoluble of an colored metal hydroxide is precipitated Listen. Let us take the, there is an example here. Iron trichloride with sodium hydroxide. Iron trichloride means. Sorry, I'm lagging. Yeah, yeah. No, some problem. It will problem. Iron. Sorry, I'm lagging. Lagging. Yeah, sorry, I'm lagging. Yeah, my internet connection is unstable. Yeah. yeah. എത്തിക്കാലാം മണിക്കൂർ കാൻ കണ്ടിന്യൂ ടുമോറോ ഓക്കേ നൗ ഓക്കേ ഐ ആം ഐ ആം ട്രൈ ക്ലോറൈഡ് എഫ് ഇ സി എൽ 3 ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് എ മെറ്റൽ സാൾട്ട് പ്ലസ് സോഡിയം ഹൈഡ്രോക്സൈഡ് ഇസ് എൻ ആൽക്കലി what will get iron hydroxide plus sodium chloride iron hydroxide plus sodium chloride so okay so here there is a table here a table this table shows the effect adding a few drops of sodium hydroxide solution to solutions containing various metal ions and of adding an excess again we are adding more what will happen the colors of the insoluble metal hydroxides can be used to identify the metal cations present in solution in some cases the precipitate dissolves in the excess hydro hydroxide with the amphoteric nature of the metal hydroxide you know amphoteric means 
they will show the properties of both acids and alkali such type of elements or such type of substances are called amphoteric amphoteric nature means they can show both both properties properties of acids and the properties of alkali okay uh, this amphoteric nature can also be used to help identify metals such as aluminum and zinc okay we can just uh, go through the table what will happen metal ion present in solution okay effect of adding sodium hydroxide what will happen so listen aluminum when we are adding uh, sodium hydroxide to aluminum it will produce a white precipitate of aluminum hydroxide white precipitate precipitate you know like this the test tube will get like this this is called precipitate so when we are adding sodium hydroxide to aluminum to aluminum present in the solution any anything any aluminum solution we are adding sodium hydroxide what will happen it will give a white precipitate is aluminum hydroxide after that again we are adding more aluminum uh, sorry more sodium hydroxide the precipitate will dissolve there is no precipitate then if you are adding sodium hydroxide to calcium solution a white precipitate of calcium hydroxide will form then again we are adding an excess means excess more more sodium hydroxide the precipitate does not dissolve it will be there it won't go it will be there the precipitate but here the precipitate will go in the case of a copper when we are adding sodium hydroxide you will get a blue precipitate of copper hydroxide if you are adding excess the precipitate does not dissolve copper blue color when we are adding the sodium hydroxide to so iron dye iron dye you will get green precipitate the precipitate does not dissolve and the iron trioxide you will get brown precipitate uh, that picture here iron tri iron tri this is iron trioxide tri hydroxide is a brown color precipitate copper is a blue color precipitate and uh, when we are adding excess precipitate does not dissolve and uh, zinc when we are adding sodium hydroxide solution to zinc oxide you will get white precipitate of zinc hydroxide precipitate dissolves excess and chromium you will get light green precipitate chromium light green precipitate dissolves so chromium light green zinc and uh, calcium aluminum white precipitate copper blue color iron dye green color iron tri brown color this is the colors of the uh, different substances